Thanks for joining us on the Cultured Meat and Future Food Podcast. We're excited to have Dr. Darren Henry as the guest for today's episode. If you're a regular listener, please give us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Before we get started, I wanted to give out a quick shout out to our sponsors, including Radical Snacks. Radical Snacks is giving us a 20% discount on their products through the end of October. Use the coupon code FUTUREFOODS on their website at www.radicalsnacks.com. That's the botanical spelling of radical ending in I-C-L-E. Our team is putting together the Cultured Meat Symposium, covering topics within the cell-based meat space following the themes of impact, future, and flavor. Speakers at the event include guests from our show, including Lisa Feria from Stray Dog Capital and Paul Shapiro from the Better Meat Co. and the Business for Good podcast, and more. Learn more about CMS18 and register at www.cms18.com. Dr. Darren Henry is the founder of Sea Future Sustainable Biotech, an early stage cellular agriculture company developing the technology to produce cultured seafood. He obtained both his BS in cellular, molecular, and microbial biology and PhD in molecular microbiology from the University of Calgary in Canada. His interest in applying scientific knowledge to solve challenging world problems along with a background in studying how cells regulate the expression of their genes and how this affects their growth and development led him to start a cultured meat company. Darren, I'd like to welcome you to the Cultured Meat and Future Food Podcast. Uh, thanks, Alex. It's uh, great to talk about cultured meat. Darren, tell us a little bit about your background and how you really got started with cellular agriculture technologies. Well, I uh, have a PhD, uh, which I got uh, from the University of Calgary in Canada. My focus was on gene regulation in cells and how that affects cells, how they grow and develop. So for me, when I was doing my PhD, I remember seeing Mark Post's hamburger that he made, you know, in, I believe it was 2012. When I saw articles talking about this, I remember that that was a very kind of like key moment in it for me where I just, that made sense to me immediately that this would be an amazing technology for the future and the future production of food. I can see how just growing the meat that people love to eat is a, a huge advantage over traditional farm methods. And for our company in particular, looking at seafood, it's much easier to grow the seafood people love to eat as opposed to having fishermen go out into the ocean and, and harvest our wild uh, stocks. So yeah, for me, it's after seeing this and being really intrigued by the technology, I finished my PhD and afterwards I was trying to find ways in which I could really apply the knowledge I'd learned as a scientist and, you know, really kept coming back to cultured meat as a way to move forward. So about a year ago, I started the company up and just kind of dove right in, started to do some research in the lab and trying to build the company up as I went along. Did you have any experience in food tech before before you started the company? No, I didn't. I was working with uh, yeast in my PhD. You know, there's a lot of similarities between yeast and stem cell work. And, you know, I felt like I could take that knowledge and really, you know, look at food as, as a, a great way to apply, you know, what I'd learned to some real world problems with growing world population, increasing meat consumption around the world, especially in seafood in Asia. I really felt that these are some really serious problems that need to be tackled. And, and it would be a great way to apply a lot of the, the knowledge knowledge I'd learned during my uh, university years. We're starting to see more and more players come into the clean meat space. But what specific element of future food is Sea Future focused on and how does your team differentiate from others that are in the space? Yeah, so definitely, as we kind of talked about before, and, and as that our name, Sea Future, kind of suggests we're very interested in, you know, producing cultured seafood products. So looking at fish, specifically early on. And we're also very interested in, you know, the crustaceans. So, you know, shrimp and lobster and crab, you know, very important economic seafood products that aren't farmed or, or really produced in the aquaculture industry. And 
from a technical point of view, you know, our team is made up of scientists and we are really focused on solving some of the hard science problems that exist at the early stages and being able to actually bring a product forward to market to work on things. And then another thing we're looking at is also trying to work with partnerships with chefs so that as we develop our, you know, minimum viable product and, and our early prototypes, you know, we want to try and take our cultured meat and create food products which really appeal to consumers and they're comfortable eating. And we, we feel this is really important as well, is that we want not just focus on the technical side, but also focus on growing our company as a company that really cares about making quality, healthy food for consumers, that's great for our oceans and great for our planet, but also, you know, is something that people enjoy to eat and, and really see it as a viable alternative to the seafood they're eating today. So you use the term uh, aquaculture for someone that doesn't really know what that means. What exactly does that entail? Yeah, so aquaculture is kind of raising fish in tanks or even in the ocean sometimes. I guess it's just like it's the farming of fish that is occurring currently today that is done quite a bit. Atlantic salmon is a species that is very widely farmed around the world and is something that a lot of people consume quite regularly. And there's other species as well that can be aquacultured. I know a lot of, you know, mollusks like scallops or oysters are aquacultured as well. But yeah, it's just the general farming of seafood species. I see. Okay. And then, you know, we hear a lot of negative aspects of that kind of farming or I guess aquaculture. Some of it being like, you know, you mentioned the ocean. Sometimes we hear about different types of dangerous materials like plastics go into the ocean and the fish potentially eat that. We also hear that when people are purchasing in the grocery store, they try to stay away from farm raised fish and they like to, I guess the alternative to that is kind of wild caught fish, I guess. What are some of the main reasons we should be looking away from the, these traditional farming methods and going towards kind of a, a cultured meat alternative for fish? Yeah, so I think one of the big issues with fish in general is that, you know, as much as we do farm it, a lot of the fish people eat today comes from the oceans, which does have a limited supply. And there's tremendous pressure put on our oceans from the seafood that we consume from it. There's lots of species around the world that on the verge of collapse or have collapsed due to overfishing. And one of the things is that if you look at historical wild capture data for fishing, it's very much plateaued for the last 20 years. And all the growth that we've seen in seafood consumption has come from you know, these aquaculture raised uh, farms. And I think in the future, what we're looking at is there's going to be, even as cultured seafood comes on, I, I still believe that wild caught fish and aquacultured fish are going to play a huge role in satisfying consumer demand. But, you know, we're just trying to provide an alternative, which we view as being a bit more environmentally friendly and hopefully also cheaper in the long run because we are not having to deal with large facilities that to raise the fish. There is inefficiencies there having to feed them and then grow a whole fish up and then send it away for processing. So what we're looking at, again, is just trying to supplement, you know, the seafood industry that already exists today and then eventually start offsetting some of this. But, you know, when you look at the growth of seafood consumption around the world, it's it looks to me that the amount of seafood that we're going to be producing, especially in the early years, is maybe only going to offset some of that growth and try and relieve some of the pressure placed on our oceans. But, you know, it's not going to solve all the problems right away. And we see it as just another alternative for people to get their seafood protein uh, from. Right. And I've heard a lot about the rise in popularity with sushi causing tuna to be more scarce. And so is there a particular type of fish that you guys are focusing on starting out? Yeah, right now we have been focusing more on just looking at the technology behind how to grow cultured fish. We haven't really picked a species right now. And we do definitely notice that there are species like tuna that are under tremendous pressure. There's also a lot of other valuable uh, fish species that there's difficulty farming them or, you know, they take a long time to mature. And those would definitely be areas that we're interested in working on. But as we move forward, we're also trying to focus on species that are important to the hospitality industry or, or the seafood manufacturing industry so that we're making products that people want to eat and consume. So that's still something we're trying to work out right now. But definitely one of the goals is to focus on some of these highly exploited species that aren't able to be farmed or need to have some sort of alternative source of uh, production. 
When it comes to some of the challenges from the technology side or even the policy side, how are, I guess, food regulations in Canada compared to the U.S.? And I asked that question knowing that a lot of the Canadian companies that I've talked to in other industries, they really look at North America as their market. But when it comes to food regulation, how is Canada different to the U.S.? Yeah, definitely. We look at it the same as other companies that it is one kind of whole market in North America. A lot of times what we've heard and what we've seen is that the regulatory process in Canada actually tends to follow the lead in the United States. So right now, I think the Canadian regulatory bodies are kind of waiting to see what happens in the U.S. with the regulation around cultured meat. And then once that process kind of happens, then they will come in and put their input in. I think a big thing in Canada is that because because we are a much smaller market than the U.S., sometimes you don't want to make judgments prematurely to the U.S. and then have different findings happen and then there being conflict because we kind of essentially are one market as a whole. So uh, right now we're kind of waiting to see what happens in the U.S. and then, you know, usually Canada follows along and makes any adjustments that they see afterwards. But we're very positive about how things are developing so far and it looks like the regulatory hurdles are going to be there. But we feel that they are necessary to make sure that there is definitely controls in place so that the food that is being produced by the cellular agriculture space is, is regulated and it's safe for consumers to eat. You're focusing on the core technologies, but I think of seafood like the octopus can regenerate parts of their body, right? And so from a scientific perspective, does this make it any different in terms of easier or harder to regenerate or develop a cell culture for? Is that something you guys are looking at at all or does that have an effect? Yeah, so looking at fish, there tends to be a lot of similarities with the traditional cell culture that's being done, you know, in mammals. But we are definitely interested in looking at species like lobster or shrimp. But there are a lot of challenges there, a lot of crustaceans. The actual technology behind culturing the cells and getting them to grow and divide in the lab is still not developed very far. So there isn't a lot of scientific literature out there talking about how to get a fully established cell line going for like shrimp mussel. So it's definitely more challenging on the technical side for some of these other species. And there, but there could be some, po like you're talking about octopus, you know, lobster you know, lives for a very long time. There's hope that maybe with these types of cell lines, it would be easier to get them to grow and divide for a longer amount of time. But there are, there are definitely some unique opportunities. But again, there are some technical challenges that still need to be kind of solved as well, making it an exciting space, but also challenging. When it comes to creating cultured meat products, right now we're seeing a lot of like ground meat, like minced product versus when we're talking about beef, like a full steak, for example. Is your team working on a product where we would be looking at something that would be ground to start more of like a, I don't know, tuna salad types of mixture? Or would you guys be working on more of like a sushi, for example? Yeah, for us, definitely, we're looking at making a product as early as possible. So that would be, as you're saying, almost like a ground fish product. For us, though, part of it is, is as we're developing, we really want to focus on making products that consumers, seafood consumers would love to eat. And as we go along, so if we get to our kind of ground meat product and we do some testing with it and we find that it's not quite what consumers are looking for, then we're totally happy to move further along the development pathway and start looking looking more at these structured or formed tissues that are more similar to sushi. From a technical point of view, it's a lot easier definitely to start at that kind of ground meat product. You know, you're not having to go through building scaffolds to put the muscle on and having extra bioreactors to finish the development process. Definitely early on focusing on these ground meat products, but as we move along, our end goal is, is in the future to get to that point where we can make like sushi for people to enjoy where produce in a very sustainable method as compared to going out in the ocean and harvesting wild tuna that's you know, 50 years old. Right, right. One thing that I like to ask is, uh, have you tried any type of cultured meat products yourself yet? 
Yeah, no, I haven't actually. Uh, the amount of kind of mature fish muscle that I've grown in the lab is very small and I haven't tried any yet. Definitely hoping to, once we get to that prototype stage and hopefully we can start working with uh, chefs to make cultured seafood dishes, it'd be very exciting to actually get to taste and, and see what the products can taste like and you know what kind of future these products have. Right. And actually, a lot of the stories I've heard of people that have tried it, it's been closely related to maybe a group of 30 people tasting a single meatball type of thing. So (laughs) cool. So your team started about a year ago. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And so you guys started a company. How has the investment landscape been? And since you started a year ago, have you seen an increase in investor interest since that starting point? Yeah, definitely seems so. I know when we first started talking about this and then and started the company about a year ago, it didn't seem like there was much talk at all. There was maybe just a few companies in the space, but it seems like in the last even three to six months, there's been a lot of cultured meat companies popping up and they've been attracting investment. For us personally, you know, even we were at the new harvest you know 2018 conference and since then we've been seeing a lot more interest from investors who want to talk to us about what we're working on and how we see the kind of industry developing in the future and it definitely seems like there's a lot more people who are aware of the industry and kind of see that there's momentum gathering and and are very excited about investing and helping the industry move forward as your team grows do you think that you'll stay in the calgary area I think definitely to start off, our plan is we have, you know, lab space here and uh, we're based here. We kind of <laughs> have been here for a while. So we're, we're definitely interested in staying here in Calgary, but definitely we'll see how things go as we kind of move forward. And if opportunities arise that kind of necessitate us to move to other cities, we're open to it as well. But we're happy here in Calgary right now and looking forward to helping almost create a new industry in Calgary. We have a question from one of our listeners, Tim from Glen Ellen, Illinois asks, uh, how soon do you think we'll be able to buy cultured fish products in the grocery store? Yeah, so for us, you know, we still think there's a few years before we'll have a product out to market. We're hoping kind of within a year, we'll be able to have a prototype out and then start working on some of the challenges around scaling up production. But you know, hopefully within kind of three years, we hope to see, you know, products out there for consumers to eat and early phase testing or, you know, maybe even in restaurants for people that get out there and actually start eating cultured meat. You can connect with Darren on LinkedIn and learn more about SeaFuture at www.seafuturebio.com. Darren, are there any last insights that you might have for our listeners today? Yeah, so I just think cultured meat is a very early industry right now. And I think, you know, it's just the the beginning of a you know great industry for the future. And I think it holds a lot of promise to solving a lot of the food and security issues that the world faces. And, you know, I just think people should keep working at it. And, you know, anybody out there who's interested in working in the cultured meat space, you know, they can always reach out to myself and talk to me. I love talking to people about cultured meat and cultured seafood particularly. And, you know, just really excited for the future and hope that everybody keeps plugging away at this problem. And eventually, hopefully very shortly in the next couple of years, we start seeing cultured meat products and hopefully start solving some of these problems that the world's facing. Darren, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your insight on the Cultured Meat and Future Food podcast. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It was great to talk to you. This is your host, Alex, and we look forward to being with you on our next episode.